Right, morning everyone. Thank you so much, Clara. Here we are then with an all-age service. We have these around and about once a month. We usually have it the first Sunday of a school holiday and then roughly four weeks after that. But we flex it a bit and this today is our all-age service. So welcome to it. Let's have that open in front of us, if that would help you. That would be a good thing. Page 1081. And let's pray together for God's help, shall we? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray you'd be with us now by your Spirit. We pray you would show us Jesus, and we pray you'd show us how to respond. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right, um, I've got uh, three brushes here today. Here's my first brush. My kitchen is looking a little bit dirty, nothing to do with uh, anyone in my family. Uh, but um, who would like to come and clean my kitchen? Oh, there's actually some volunteers. That surprises me. I'm glad you don't need to, but thank you anyway. Thanks for being so willing. Maybe you can one day clean my kitchen. That'd be good. I've got another brush here. Uh, this brush is, oh yeah, this is it. Yeah, um, it's not mine. But I've, I've got a bit of dandruff. I wonder if, um, would anyone like to come brush the dandruff out of my hair? <laughs> yeah, less volunteers that time, what a funny thing. Don't worry, I don't have dandruff, I use head and shoulders. Um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, good, all right, um, and I've got uh, another brush here, where is it? Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, uh, who would like to come and use this brush? Uh, uh, my toilet, uh, don't let me tell you about my toilet, what happened there? Uh, no, uh, let me not tell you. But anyone like to clean my toilet? Mm, yeah. I'm just joking, put your hands down, guys. Uh, this is a clean brush, okay, it's brand new. It's fine, uh, don't worry about that, right? Uh, no, okay, fine, yeah, those jobs, no one wants to do those jobs, do they? I guess they're only things you really do for yourself or maybe for someone in your family. I love the children were volunteering, thank you. Uh, but today we see Jesus has a very different attitude. Let's look at his attitude. First of all, we need to see how important Jesus is. So let's read this together. Let's read how important Jesus is together. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Okay, so God the Father had made Jesus in charge of all things forever. Jesus had come from heaven and he was going back to heaven. And so you would expect Jesus to say, bow to me, I'm important. Do some religious act for me. But Jesus did not say that. Jesus did something for his followers instead. And he did the, the kind of thing that only a slave would do. Jesus did something like this. Just gonna, um, I'm just going to roll my sleeves up for this. Uh, and I think I'll take my shoes off as well. I think I might ro roll my trousers up actually as well. It's as far as I'm going to go. Don't worry. Um, actually, Jesus did it much more than this. Jesus, he, uh, he took off his outer clothing. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and he wrapped a towel around his waist. And he actually looked like a slave when he did this. That's what a slave would wear. And in verse five, he got some water and he poured it into a basin. So here we go, he poured some water into a basin. And he began to wash his disciples' feet and then to dry them with the towel he was wearing. So this is the king of the universe doing something that only a slave would do. The, the king of the universe with all power and authority coming that low, as low as something like this. Um, I've got another brush. It's my toothbrush, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come clean your shoes. Nick, let's have a look. <laughs> Sorry, James, on the sound desk.
in Jesus' day, it was much worse because they used to wear sandals, okay, and open sandals. And the streets where they used to walk around, they had animals around, didn't they? And the animals would make mess everywhere. So you'd basically be walking in animal mess. So Jesus is cleaning all that stinky mess off people's feet. That is a really big deal, isn't it? And so no wonder Simon, uh, Simon Peter says this. He says, no, you shall never wash my feet. See, Peter knew that Jesus was so important. He, he couldn't see why Jesus should serve him as a slave. But Jesus said this. Let's read together what Jesus said. Let's read this together. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Do you see that? No part with Jesus. We cannot be one of Jesus' people unless he washes us clean. What does that mean? Well, Jesus certainly means something more than just washing with water, doesn't he? Because he said this, he said, you do not realise now what I am doing. I mean, they realised he's washing his feet. They're not, they're not stupid. You don't realise now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. It means something much more. And of course, we know what will happen later, don't we? Because Jesus has already said. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so Jesus, he's going to the cross to die. And that's how he'll, he'll love his people to the very end. He is like the Passover lamb. He's going to give his blood on the cross to wash people clean. And his blood, his death will do that. And so what we need to see is that Jesus must humbly wash us clean. He must not on the outside, but on the inside. And unless he does, unless he took Peter's forever death on the cross, he could not be clean for how he turned away from God. And you know what? Nor can we. You know all the ways that you've said no to God and you've said yes to your own way. You know all those ways? You know how dirty you've made yourself before God? You know that? Well, that's what Jesus was willing to clean, to wash for you, much more than with my toothbrush. He was going to wash it with his own blood by taking your forever death. It is amazing. And so, brothers and sisters, this is love, isn't it? That Jesus would come this low to pay for how we've turned from God and to wash us clean. And this low meant the cross and the death of a slave, dirty with guilt and shame, though he had none of his own. And friends, maybe you are still saying to Jesus, no, you will never wash me clean, like Peter. Maybe you want to do something to serve Jesus, but you don't want Jesus to serve you, and you don't see the need for him to. But Jesus says, you're not clean unless I wash you. You must let me die for your dirt before you serve me. Will you do that? Will you trust in Jesus to do that? If not, you have no part with Jesus, he says. So please do that today. And if you'll do that, you are his now and forever. We'll have more on that in a minute and what it means for us. But first of all, shall we praise Jesus for cleaning us? Shall we? Yes, let's do that. Let's stand together. We're going to sing. We're going to sing that Jesus paid it all. Let's stand together and we'll sing.
Our Father in heaven, thank you, Jesus paid it all and washed our sin white as snow. We owe all to him now. Please help us to see how to respond now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you have a seat, please? So, did it feel a bit awkward, me uh, cleaning your shoes with my toothbrush? Did that feel a bit awkward to you? Yeah, a little bit awkward, didn't it? Um, I've got an electric one at home, it's okay, it's not really mine, it's fine. Uh, but, but Jesus found it really hard to accept, sorry, Peter found it really hard to accept <laughs> Jesus doing this, didn't he? But he, he had to accept Jesus doing this because we've seen Jesus must humbly wash us. But what we're going to see now is that we must humbly serve others. Now, Peter finally gets this. And he says, well, in that case, don't just clean my feet, do my hands and my head as well. But Jesus answered. Let's read together what Jesus said. Let's read this together. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean. Now, this is a funny thing, isn't it, to say, really? But the idea is, right, if you go, um, if you go to a party, yeah, you've got your party hat, you go to a party, right? Uh, and before you go to the party, the night before, maybe, you have a bath, don't you? Or you have a shower or something, nice and clean, you're wearing your nice clean clothes, and you go to the party, and you get to the front door, ding dong, and they open the door. Uh, is the first thing you say, oh, hi, I'm at the party now, can I please have a bath in your bath? Uh, it would be a bit awkward, wouldn't it? Do you mind if I have a quick shower uh, in your shower? You don't do that, do you? No, because all you need to do is maybe wipe your feet. Just come in, wipe your feet, you're clean. You're already clean. That's the idea, that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you're clean now and forever. You're clean as soon as you trust in Jesus to die for you. You don't need another bath. And so baptism, remember we baptised Ivan? That's a really good picture of this. We are washed now, once and for all, now and forever, when we trust in Jesus. But of course, we still do turn away from God, sadly. Uh, and so it's good that we say sorry and we confess our sins, like we have done already today. That's a bit like, you know, wiping your feet or something like that. But we're already forgiven, once and for all, if we're trusting in Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, if you are trusting in Jesus, but you still feel chained to your guilt and your shame, you need to know Jesus is saying you can let go of that. You are clean. Please do keep saying sorry to God when you realise you sin again, but know you have that cleanness. Now, when we do the confession, we try and get this balance, don't we? Know you're forgiven, but also say sorry to God. It's a difficult balance to get, isn't it? I'm sorry, we do get it wrong. I'm sure we do, but we're trying to get that balance right. Jesus must humbly wash us. We must humbly serve others. That's the next bit. Okay, so now you know this. Um, now you know Jesus washed you clean. Who would like to clean my kitchen? Still just the children, isn't it? Okay. All right. Thank you, children. Put your hands down. All right. Who would like to clean my dandruff? Who'd like to clean my dandruff? Don't worry. I use head and shoulders. I don't have dandruff. It's fine. Um, who would like to... I'll tell you what. My toilet, right? Oh, my toilet. Who would like to have a good go at my toilet? It's not... It's not getting it. Josh wants to. Yeah, he's a servant. Look at him. That's what curates should do, isn't it? Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I'll see you this afternoon, Josh. I'll see you this afternoon. Uh, good. Now, uh, let's, <laughs> uh, let's read together what we're supposed to do now we know all this, okay? Let's read together verse 14. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet you also should wash one another's feet. Okay, we're supposed to wash each other's feet. So does, does Jesus mean, literally, we should all go and get our toothbrushes and start, you know, cleaning the mud off each other's shoes like I did? Is that that's what Jesus, Jesus means? Is that what he means? No, no. He's not saying that, is he? Jesus means, no, he is the Lord and teacher, and yet he has given his life on the cross to make us clean. Look how low Jesus came 
for others. And if you know that, we don't go, oh, well, I better die on the cross then, uh, you know, to clean others of their sin. We don't do that, do we? No. But we do need to come low and serve each other. And, and brothers and sisters, we need to see how very strange this is, because I think we think, oh, yeah, that's, that's fine, but it's not. It's very, very strange. Where is Shep, by the way? Where is he? He's, I'm not sure what he's been up to recently. So sorry, Ben. Oh, come to the mic. Tell us what's going on, Shep. What, what, what's been going I've on? I've deleted all your sermons in the past five years. I'm so sorry. You deleted all my sermons from the past five yeah. years? Yeah. I was going to read those in my oh, old I'm age so and realise realize all the mistakes I made when I was... No? Oh, okay. Um, all right. Um, so um, what are you going to do about it, Shep? What are you going to do, do about it? There's nothing I What can, are you going to do about it? I'm going to wash your feet. That's going to make things better. wash my feet. Now, um, that sounds good, doesn't it? Because has he done wrong? Y- yes, he has. Uh, where has he gone? There he is. Don't run away. Uh, sh- should he make it up to me? Yeah, I, th- I think he should. But Jesus is not saying that. Jesus is saying, uh, he's saying the opposite of that. He's saying the one who's done no wrong should serve the one who's done wrong. Do you get that? So, Shep, come here. Come on. Come on. They are looking a bit oh. dirty, actually. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. That's all right. OK, give them a round of applause. Thank you, Shep, very much. Um, you see, we need to copy Jesus now and come very low and serve each other, not just to make it up to somebody when we've done something wrong, when they deserve it, but even when they don't deserve it, especially when they don't deserve it. And that is much more challenging. So let's just have a a few questions to help us think about this as we close. Firstly, is there any serving that is too low for me? Is there any serving that's too low for me? Think about that for yourself. It is so great that um, We do lots of serving at Grace Church, actually. But I think we could be thinking, maybe I'll do this thing, but not that thing. It is so great how many people help with the kids' groups. We're going to have some kids' training this afternoon. Thank you so much. It's so great how many people help with the music. Thank you so much. It's so great how many people do the welcome team. Thank you so much. What a really good model that we are all serving so much. But do you know what? very posh dinner uh, for, the, for the diocese, a uh, different diocese in the Church of England. And um, they had like catering staff who were paid to do the work, okay? And about nine o'clock in the evening, we went to the chapel for a bit of a time of worship. And the main bishop said, we can't start yet. Where's, um, where's Bishop so-and-so? Where is he? And someone put up their hand and said, he's doing the washing up. He's doing the washing up. So they had staff paid to do all the work, but the bishop went to work with the staff and do the worst bit of their job. Isn't that wonderful? That's what we're talking about. Is there any, is there any serving that's too low for me, first of all? Second question, do I have serving limits? Do I have serving limits? Think for yourself, this is for you, not for me. Well, it is for me as well, isn't it? Do I have serving limits? Maybe you help clear up after church lunch. Maybe you move tables and chairs after church lunch. Thank you so much. But will you actually clean those tables and chairs and clean the floor too, as you do? Or you might help with the washing up after church lunch. Thank you so much. It's so important. But will you do the worst bits? Will you clean the saucepans? They're really hard work, aren't they? Will you empty the food waste? That's not a nice job. Or do we just leave it for Shep? Because that's his job. Now, Shep's future is quite uncertain, isn't it? We don't know what's going to happen. That's a really good wake-up call for us not to rely on our staff. Maybe we'll have no ministry assistant one day, and we'll have to share the practical work much more. That's a really healthy thing, isn't it? Let's not just hire people because then we don't have to do stuff ourselves. No, let's hire people to train them like Shep 
and let's hire them to multiply ministry, like reaching Blackbird Lees with the assistant minister position. All right, do I have serving limits? Final question. Would I give up serving if I felt not thanked? Would I give up serving if I felt not thanked? You know, I sometimes catch myself hoping people will see me serving. Do you ever do that? Do you ever do that? I really hope someone's going to see me do this. Do you ever do that? It's really sad, isn't it? Or I'm serving, but on the inside, I'm just a bit cross that no one else is. Do you ever find yourself doing that? It's not just me. I'm sure it's not just me. But it's really sad, isn't it? Thing is, that's what serving is, isn't it? It, that's what serving is. If we do serving to build ourselves up, it is not serving others, 100%. It is serving me. So if you're not thanked or you're not recognized, I'm really sorry. I don't want you not to be thanked or not recognized. But you know what? It's going to happen. It will, if you're humbly serving. And we don't serve because others deserve it. And we don't serve to be recognized. No, Jesus came very low to die for those who don't deserve it. And so must we. Jesus must humbly wash us. We must humbly serve others. And that is serving. And it's very challenging. And so one final word from Jesus to help you. And that is this. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. It's challenging, but it is blessed when we do it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean. Thank you. He's so important, and yet he came so low, lower than a slave, to give his life to wash us clean. We praise him very much. And Father, please help us not just trust that he did that for us. Please help us respond. Please help us serve as he has served us by coming very low for each other, even when it's not deserved, even when we're not thanked. Please help us to humbly serve. And with this church be a church that is so full of humble service, it really glorifies you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.